this is my 10th movie. So it's a lot of grips I've worked with over the years. <laughs> uh, um, all flirty. No, not all flirty. What I love about Nicole. Loving you. She's a great dancer. Infectious. I certainly draw from experience and other people's stories. And when you're writing, things take off and you know, your imagination takes over. And if you didn't know a flirty grip, you might make one up you know, if, when you're in a good writing groove. I thought we should talk. OK. I don't know how to start. That scene, which we shot over two days, was uh, on one hand, I think one of the hardest things I've ever done. I was really taken with it as we were doing it. And it's not the kind of scene that you can just pop in and do like, oh, we'll just do this line. You really need the momentum. That scene's so much about momentum. Uh, so we'd have to start always from the beginning. So it was exhausting for them also. But also, I think the most fulfilling thing I've done as a director, as a final scene, I think it's cathartic too, uh, uh, really because of what they gave there. And I felt, well, at some point, we really need to be in there with them. And the, the movie is a lot about their faces because you know, I, I, up until that point in the movie, they've kind of lost their voices. You know, the lawyers have taken over. And this is a moment where they're kind of trying to speak for themselves, but they've been so infected by all of this other stuff that's been going on. So I felt like they have such beautiful, expressive faces, and it was really important, I felt, that we be in there with them. The blocking was very specific, because I knew where I wanted to cut. So like they would have to lunge forward on a certain line or turn left on a certain line because I knew I was going to cut between these, these kind of intense close-ups as we get in closer. Just watching the two of them, it's like watching like, the best athletes that, you know, do what they do best. You know, they were both totally unconscious and out of themselves and absolutely playing each moment exactly as it was supposed to be played. It's kind of claustrophobic because we, it was just one camera and a bunch of people in one small room. But even though it kind of felt like theater, it just felt like theater for that, that group of people. And, and the theme of theater and performance is, is also a theme that runs throughout the movie anyway. It starts on Scarlett's face in the middle of her performance. And they, I'm a theater director and she's an actor. You know, the, the ritual of going through a divorce, you know, you're kind of putting on a performance, you know, taking hum, human moments, writing them down and turning them into weapons and, you know, performing them for a, a judge to make a decision, you know, the, so it kind of lent itself to the uh, to that scene. And also it's like, what, what a rare thing that you're going to get a chance to do an 11 page, you know, scene over the course of two days where Noah has structured it to do nothing but help you. We're taking our time, there's no rush, and because the writing is good, it just opens your imagination to different intention. The words are the words, and that's also how it's similar to theater. There's not, we're not improvising or winging it, it you know. It can change given if you're working with someone great, uh, like I was in Scarlet, and Noah would uh, give us an idea, you know, we would give him idea. It was just really, an ongoing conversation that started in the morning one day and ended two days later. And, and then we kind of put it away. And the next day seemed to be an equally intense scene, um, but just not as long. Well. I, I, I wanted someone for the character, Bert Spitz. I wanted somebody who would feel fatherly, wise, in some ways like the, the, the perfect surrogate parent, but as a lawyer. And I've always projected that onto Alan Alda since seeing him in MASH when I was a kid. And I just felt like he would make everything feel like it would be okay. And of course he does. I mean, he's just, you know, he's exactly the person I hoped he would be. I think it was also the intent for him to be like, oh, that's what you want to hear and that's actually right. Like what, what you're saying is what Charlie wants is to bring the humanity into something that feels very sterile, uh, but it just doesn't turn out to be effective.